you all should mute yourself as soon as you join uh, because uh, otherwise there is a lot of disturbance. Okay. Yeah, so let me start the lecture. Uh, we are dealing with the endodontic surgery part two. So this again is a long lecture. I'll try to finish it in 40 minutes. Okay. So uh, coming, uh, if we are uh, dealing with, can you hear me clearly? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so uh, yes, with the uh, next part, that is the periradicular surgery. As you understand, periradicular surgery is a surgery which occurs around the root apex. So very commonly it is mistaken as a bisectomy, but there is a slight difference in it, which you will understand as I uh, talk about this these parts. So, so coming uh, to any surgical part, there are many parts which are in uh, common with oral surgery. So I will be just giving, going very shortly with it. And any periradicular surgery, as you know, will follow these following steps. That is, it will have local anesthesia, then management of the soft tissue, management heart tissue, access to the root structure. Because our ultimate aim is to reach the root. So, uh, uh, then after you reach the root, there is periradicular curettage. There is root end resection, which is actually episectomy. Then root end preparation, root end restorations and uh, soft tissue repositioning again, and then the post-surgical care. So, the first part that is anesthesia and hemostasis is, uh, as you know, is common with what we do in oral surgery. We go and uh, choose an anesthetic which is long acting and um, which will give you profound anesthesia. So the uh, objective always in during any anesthesia is that it should give you profound and prolonged uh, pain relief and it should provide uh, hemostasis as well during the surgical procedure. So all the local anesthetic that you will be using will contain, uh, will contain a hemostatic agent. So in the selection is based of the anesthetic uh, selection is based on the medical status of the patient and uh, desired duration of the anesthesia. The next is the soft tissue management. Here again, it is covered, I think, in oral surgery, periodontia, and all the other branches of uh, which have surgical part in it. So I'll be very briefly telling you about the flap design. The main part being that the base of the flap should be wider than the uh, apex. It should not be on any bony defect. It should not be near a mucogingival junction or across a, a major muscle attachment or bony eminence. So, to, uh, and it should include the whole lesion. Like if the lesion is one centimeter long and you have uh, just made a two mm uh, long incision, it doesn't make sense because you cannot reach the whole extent of the lesion from that narrow opening unless you are operating under a microscope or doing micro endosurgical procedures. So uh, we have to take into consideration that also. Then you avoid a sharp corner. The incision should be made with continuous stroke. That is, it should be a clean incision and you should do it like properly, like uh, following all the surgical protocols. Okay. The next is what, uh, what instruments you are using. These are the common blade numbers which we use. And if you are using, if you see this small, the last blade, that is the microsurgical blade, which is very, very small. So here the incision is small, the opening is small, and all these are being done under the microscope. So uh, you can use these small instruments. 
after you do the incision, then you have to reflect the flap. This again, uh, you have to do with the help of periosteal elevators. You have learned all this in oral surgery, so I am not going to take in detail. Flap retraction. Once you have lifted the flap, you have to keep the soft tissue flap away from the uh, bone because otherwise when you are cutting the bone with a drill that is a my, uh, micro motor hand piece or a bird then the flap will get damaged so it is important that you save the flap properly and here the retractors are used and they are always placed on a solid platform and the flap is held very gently otherwise what will happen is it will destroy the flap Heart tissue management is uh, important now. Once you have reflected and retracted the muroperiosteal uh, flap, then you have to have a surgical axis made to the root. And the root, as you know, is always covered with a bone. So you have to reach the uh, tooth through the bone. So how you will uh, cut the bone? You are using a... Uh, you are using what? Yeah, you are using a burr, a slow rotating a steel burr to cut or a carbide burr to cut the bone. Okay. And once you have reached the root, you should be able to identify that it is a root. Now, how you will know that it is a root and not a bone? These are the following points. You should always remember that the root will be yellowish. It will not bleed. Even if you probe it, it will not bleed. It will be smooth and hard and will be surrounded by periodontal ligament. Okay. The optimal size of an op uh, osteotomy is this big. It should be at least uh, big enough to give you a good access to the uh, surgical site. In, if you are using a, a, a ultrasonic clip as you do in a, a microsurgical procedure, there the length should be 4 mm. Now once you have opened the apex, then... It's okay. Once you have opened the apex here in the picture, you can see you have reached the apex. You have lifted, uh, the flap is reflected, the flap is held behind by these crowbar elevators. And now you, with the excavator, you are reaching the apex and you are trying to clean the apex. The apex is clean because the, there is a pathology there. And uh, you have to, if sometimes you have done an overextended thinning or if a fractured instrument has escaped into the periapical uh, region or there is a, uh, like, if, even if your gutta percha is extending there, then all these things can be, uh, can be uh, removed with the help during the periradicular curator. So, so you can see that this is the uh, curate which you are using and it is scraping away the whole of the foreign body material of the periapical infection that was there. The entire mass is removed by this curate. If you see the curate is such a, of such a size that it can easily enter the lesion. The convexity of the curate is towards the bone and the concavity is towards the root and generally you will lift the uh, uh, material or periapical material from there. Okay. So the next is the root end resection. This is actually episectomy. This comes as the short note for you. So it is very important and when the root end resection you have to write screen indications uh, root end uh, episectomy the indications are eliminating 
when you want to eliminate anatomical variations, ledges, canal obstructions, resorptive defects, perforation defects, or separated instruments. Visual, when you have to, when all these things are not there, but you are still doing a apisectomy, then you may want to visualize the seal created by the orthograde, orthograde treatment when you want to do a root end sealing. Or if you want to gain access to pathological tissue trapped along lingual side of the tooth. If you go back to the earlier picture, see this is the lingual side of the root. So if you want to even take a biopsy, unless you cut this part of the root, you cannot reach this part, isn't it? So here, what we are doing is, in case you want to reach this part, if this lesion was big enough, then unless I remove a part of this, I will not be able to clean the lingual side of the tooth. So these are the common indication for episectomy. These are the instruments which are recommended for doing episectomy. That is cutting away of the uh, pical third of the root. You have round birds, two types of round bird, number six and number eight, and sorry, tapered fisher bird, uh, number 702, in a low speed straight handpiece. We do not use high speed to cut the root or we do not use an air rotor or an air motor to remove because there is a chance of this uh, air escaping into the tissue and causing other problems. At times, if you are equipped with a laser, uh, Argam uh, Iridium Iag laser, uh, laser sorry, is used because it is known to give a smooth, clean surface. Then how much of the apex you should remove? Here are the three pictures. The first picture will, is showing you that if you remove 1 mm of the apex, then only 52% of the uh, periapical anastomosis is removed. So even if you are doing uh, this episectomy and if you have removed 1 mm, there is infective material in these lateral canals which are still present there, so which will result in the recurrence of the uh, lesion again. If you remove 2 mm, then you remove 78% of the lateral uh, branches of the periapical region and again some of the uh, uh, lateral uh, branches will remain which may contain infective uh, material in it and cause recurrence. So it is recommended that you should remove at least 3 mm of the uh, periapic uh, root surface of the root apex and that will take care of most of the periapical uh, anastomosis that is there. One or two may remain up but these can be, these are generally large enough and can be sealed with a root canal sealer or even gutta percha at times. So our main aim is to remove the apical part. So here we are removing, it is recommended that you remove 3 mm, that will remove 93% of the thing. Once you have cut the apex, now you can how, in a which direction do you want to make it straight or do you want to make it at an angle? See, here you see this cut is straight and you are somewhere here. Then you will not be able to see this opening. So if you give an angulation like this, your eye is here, then you will be able to see the canal, opening of the canal and clean it properly. So generally when you are doing a routine or the general surgery that we do without a microscope, we recommend that a 45 degree angulation should be given so that it is easily visible. In microsurgery, when you are working under a microscope, the dynamics change and you can give a lesser slope that is around a 10 degree slope is given so that you can visualize this part of the apex. Now, once you have, see here, this cavity is open now. So, you will have to prepare this cavity in a way like you do a class one, uh, a class one cavity preparation. Because here it is irregular, it is filled with 
necrotic debris or sometimes even the sealer and you won't be able to place a root and sealing material here directly. So you need to prepare a proper class 1 cavity at the root apex. So to create this cavity so that it can receive a root and filling material. It is always placed parallel to the long axis of the tooth because if you do not maintain that you might end up perforating the root. And very small round birds or inverted core buns or at times ultrasonic tips are also used. See here the cavity is prepared at the root apex end. So this should be parallel to the long axis of the tooth. If you are doing it like this, you might perforate the root at this end. So class 1 cavity preparation along the long axis of the root confines should be confined in the root canal only and this depth this depth should be 2 to 3 mm. Disadvantage is that if you are not cautious enough in aligning the burr properly, you might perforate the root. Retrograde restorative materials. Now, since uh, you are, have to put some material, you have created a cavity just like you do amalgam and composite, you have to put a apical restorative material. This also comes as a short note for you. So the, this material is required as you understand to seal the apex. Okay? So coming to what are the ideal properties along it being good for the periapical tissue, bacteriostatic and bactericidal, it should adhere to the tooth, it should be dimensionally stable, readily available and easy to handle. It should not stain the teeth or the periradicular tissue. It should be resistant to dissolution. It should be electrochemically inactive, that is non-corrosive. It should promote cementogenesis and should be radiopic. So most important are it should promote cementogenesis. It should pro, um, um, do, be radiopic because you should be able to see it. Then which are the common root and filling materials? As you know, gutta percha, amalgam, uh, IRM, glass inomer, composite resins, mineral trioxide and biodentine are new materials which have come up and which are doing excellently. So almost all these other materials have been discarded by the dentist. So if the question is asked in the viva, do talk about MTA or biodentine. Okay. Then soft tissue. Once you have uh, removed the apex, filled the cavity, now you have to go back and uh, seal the cavity with the soft tissue. So you have to reposition the flap. Once you re replace the flap, then gently compress the flap so that there is, it, this will enhance the clo uh, clotting in the severed blood vessel. And as you know, clotting is essential for repair to occur. Then you suture, you know all the suturing techniques, you know all the suture material, I'll not go in detail of this. Do not forget to give post-operative instruction and care, what care the patient should take. The common being, do not lift your lip or pull back your cheek just to see what is there. This might loosen your uh, suturing or it might cause bleeding. Little bleeding, little swelling, bruising of the face are common after a periradicular surgery because it generally takes a little more time and you have to retract the cheek or the lips for a long period of time which may cause swelling and bruising. You uh, have to avoid drinking alcohol or use tobacco. Uh, tobacco. For the next two to three days, have a good soft diet and drink lots of liquid for the first few days of surgery. Okay. So these things you have to maintain. Place an ice bag. All these things are very commonly told in your oral surgery. So same instructions you need to give. Next part is the corrective surgery. So in endodontic surgery, one part is the periradicular surgery and other part is the corrective surgery. This surgery we have to do when there is some defect in the body of the root other than the apex. So earlier we were talking about the apex. Now we are talking of correction in the 
body of the root other than the apex okay so these we have to do because of procedural errors what are procedural errors it is like if you are uh, causing perforation while doing your work it becomes a procedural a procedural error there is resorption root caries root fracture or periodontal disease so corrective surgeries are of three types you have root resection you have hemisection and you have intentional replantation root resection also comes as a short note so uh, root resection or it is also known as root amputation it is a procedure where a logical way to eliminate a weak disease root to allow a strong survival when if retained together see this is a maxillary molar here you can see that only this that is the uh, distal root is buccal distobuccal root is involved with a periodontal defect and there is a deep pocket here all the other roots are good so in this case where we cannot we, like if your periodontal therapy fails and all then what you do is you ampute this root here and remove this root so these two teeth will be good enough to maintain this tooth in the socket so this is root amputation the distance between but here you have to um, follow certain things that is distance between the pulp chamber floor and the coronal aspect of the root resorption is at least 3 mm because if this is narrow then there is no place for us to place the uh, supra gingival attachment uh, apparatus or 1 mm of the crown margin because this tooth will require a crown later on so if you do not have a tooth structure here you will not be able to place the crown margins properly the root and the indications for this is like if there is a good periodontal loss as so, seen in that picture or there is destruction of the root through resorptive process caries or mechanical perforations so in those cases you have to uh, do this uh, root resorption uh, root amputation okay so when even if sometimes endodontically inoperable endodontically inoperable roots that are calcified if suppose that one root was totally calcified or it had a big separated instrument and you could not remove that instrument or it is so much curved that endodontic therapy is not possible in those cases also it is indicated that you ampute that particular root rather than extract the whole tooth if one root is showing fracture then why remove the rest of the tooth you have to remove only that particular root but it does have some contraindications also even when you are doing this heroic uh, surgeries you should see that the remaining tooth structure has enough osseous support otherwise after surgery the tooth will start becoming mobile and it will go for extraction so that surgery is totally uh, unnecessary if there are fused roots in that particular picture if you remember if the roots were fused properly totally it will be difficult for you to demarcate which root where the root ends and how to remove the root because it will be fused with the other root it will not be elevated okay remaining root or roots should be end, uh, should be good if they are endodontically inoperable like if you go back to that picture if the mesiobuccal and the palatal root were also calcified and you were not able to do endodontic treatment in those particular roots removing only the distobuccal root defeats the purpose you have to have you have to and you must remove the whole tooth then okay and when there is lack of patient's motivation in all such surgeries there is a post op maintenance of the tooth because the margins are placed such that there is a plug deposition there and the patient should be in a position especially those patients like a, a, a physically compromised patient or patient who is, who is unable to maintain his oral hygiene all those patients are not good enough for root amputation hemisection hemisection is defined as separation of a multi rooted tooth and the removal of the root with 
of the with the associated portion of the clinical crown here this arrow you can see that this is a lower mandibular first molar here the tooth to the tooth is separated uh, by a, a cut bar cut in two parts out of this two part one part along with the crown part we have removed so this is a complete hemisection that is you have divided this two in two parts and one part you have removed okay so i am stressing this there is a removal of the root okay this word is very important for hemisection the next you see is bicuspidization this is a similar procedure which refers to division of the crown that leave the two halves and the respective roots inside the patient's mouth okay in the first you have removed this in bicuspidization you are dividing it into two just like you did it here if you are dividing it into two but you are not removing any part you are maintaining both the part inside the tooth so this is a very important line here leave the two halves and their respective roots inside bicuspidization is considered mainly in the mandibular molars in which periodontal disease has been invaded okay and the furcation tissue is involved the furcation here is turned into inter intraproximal space where the tissue is more manageable by the patient see i'll show you the next slide then you will understand see here we have given a cut here separated both the teeth see the radiograph it is separated till the furcation area and we have placed two separate crowns on these teeth okay so these teeth are now acting as two premolars a premolar is also called as a cuspid so this becomes bicuspidization of a molar understood and now this area is easily cleanable by the patient the earlier the reason why this was done was there was perforation by the patient by the operator or there was infection in the furcation area so this is also one of the important treatment plannings in your endodontic surgery then next comes intentional replantation it is like these things were earlier done very commonly and even today sometimes uh, people are doing these kind of surgeries to give complete relief to the patient so sometimes where there is a difficult access if you have a patient whose mouth opening is very less and you cannot uh, do uh, you uh, your his mouth opening is less then you if you can't uh, do endodontic treatment there then you extract that tooth do a endodontic treatment outside and then replace the tooth in the socket when there are anatomic limitations perforation in the area is not accessible surgically failed apical surgery apical surgery will which might create a defect suppose you have a tooth uh, which is having long roots and the roots are very near to the sinus if you think about doing periradicular surgery what will happen is you will perforate the sinus and there will be more complications so in these cases you have to uh, do the uh, you do re think of reimplantation contraindication when there is pre existing moderate to severe periodontal disease there is curved or flare roots in such cases removal or extraction as you have all experienced is difficult when the tooth ultimately is not restorable if you are doing everything and you cannot still restore the tooth it doesn't have any point in that so you have to consider certain points important points in that that uh, extra oral time should be minimum you have to keep the periodontal ligament viable and you have to minimize the damage to the cementum and the periodontal ligament during elevation and extraction lastly is a short note might come on endodontic microsurgery so this is a procedure which is been uh, advocated by dr kim we are very proud to uh, tell you that one of our student is a 
has worked under Dr. Kim, and she is one of the person who is uh, also a pioneer along with him in uh, advocating endodontic microsurgery. The, so uh, you all have a bright future, only you should believe in yourself that you can do it. The microscope has changed surgical endodontics from a blind technique to a visually dominated technique. The patient can do all the surgeries with a minimal exposure. These are the indications when non-surgical endodontic surgery has failed, when there is previous endodontic surgery, anatomic deviations, procedural errors. Contraindication, they are similar to endodontic surgery. Only here we require very small uh, osteotome and a very small uh, periradicular curettage uh, curate or a apical uh, resection you can do with a very small bird. So uh, everything is very small, microscopic here. And the pain is also less because since the surgical procedure is smaller, the pain will be less. Long uh, acting anesthetic analgesic procedure is there. Swelling. Post-surgical edema, hematoma, infections are common causes. You have to inform the patient, reassure the patient and ask him to give uh, cold packs. Bleeding is another problem which occurs here. Okay. Management, how to control bleeding is covered in oral surgery. Achymosis, another common thing because of rest, uh, retraction or sometimes if you have used some irrigant while doing the treatment, it might cause problems and achymosis. So in conclusion, endodontic surgery is dy dynamic and it is imperative that scientific investigation continue. Concept, techniques and material used in endodontic surgery should be continually evaluated and modified for better emphasis on the long-term outcome. That is the ultimate aim of an endodontist or a conservative dentist is to save the tooth. We believe in saving. We need to save, save, save the tooth. We do not believe in implants. So this is this was uh, in short about endodontic surgery. It's a very important topic. In your final year, Every year, at least a short note or a full question you will see on endodontic surgery. So, do remember to read this particular part. Okay. So, I think only six minutes is remaining. Uh, I can't, uh, I hope you understood. If there are any questions, you can ask. I have not taken any picture. I want you all to send me the um, pictures, screenshots, as well as the attendance. But, so uh, please uh, take. Okay. See you. Bye bye. Take care. Stay home. Stay safe. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ma yeah, no questions, I guess. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah? It is important to read this topic. That is what I'm saying. It's very, very important. You read this topic properly. And, uh, okay? Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you.